Hi everyone, it's Lisa here. I'm back today with a video for you and today I'm going to be colouring this Clearly Besotted Make-A-Wish stamp and I'm going to be colouring it with my zigs and I'm going to do a video which is going to be partly in real time and also partly sped up and the reason that I'm doing that is because I've had some requests in the past to not speed up the video some people want to see see it colored in real time they really want to kind of understand the thought process behind how you uh, blend your colors and so on and so forth but I thought what I could do with this stamp as you can see you've got two areas of petals and then you've got your leaf sections as well so what I thought I'd do so the video isn't really really long is color one of the um, floral images and also a couple of the leaves in real time and then I'll speed up the video for the remainder of the image because that way you can really sort of understand the process and see some of it in real time and the rest of it really is is very similar I mean it's just a little bit of difference in terms of what color you put where but that's my plan anyway so that's how the video is going to work today so this is the stamp set it's one of my favorite as I said earlier it's called make a wish by Clearly Besotted and one of the reasons that I really love this stamp set is because of the size of the colouring areas. I think, you know, sometimes you colour floral images that have really small areas, it really makes it hard to get that blending. But I think for this, the leaves are quite a, a really good size and the petals, you can really get some um, nice combinations of colours within that. So. I'm going to start by stamping the image and I'm going to be using some Versafine Onyx Black to do that. So I think I'm going to want my layout to be something similar to that today. I've coloured this image so many times but I, have, I don't think I've actually done it in this orientation before. So I'm using Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock one of my favourite card stocks for colouring with zigs. I do also use Windsor & Newton Bristol boards sometimes but today I'm using the Strathmore. They are fairly similar but sometimes I feel that the Strathmore Bristol Smooth actually um, holds the colour a bit better. It doesn't bleed quite as much but the Windsor & Newton one is whiter so there's an advantage to both um, but today I've chosen to use use the sort of slightly more creamy Bristol uh, Strathmore Bristol smooth so I stamped that I have got a good impression so I'm not going to need to double stamp that so I've taped my stamped panel down now this panel is actually four and a quarter by five and a half but I am going to trim it down so that it goes on an A2 uh, card base so it I've taped it down it doesn't matter that I'm losing a little bit of the edge because I'm going to be trimming that anyway so what I'm going to do now is just show you how I went about choosing my colours and I have these swatches this is actually sorry went the wrong way there this I got off Jennifer Maguire's uh, website she has a download where you can download all the little kind of sections of the colors and I just mounted them on to a card stock so there were six um, six panels that you could print off and I, I added two on the back and I've got the four here so I've just completed it with the zigs that I own but I have colored this stamp before and I thought I would do it again with the colors that I like and so I've picked out three greens and the first the first two greens I suppose I'm going to be using more of are the light green and the olive green so the olive green sort of a, a brownie very kind of muted brownie green the light green is obviously a lot lighter a very kind of mid-tone and I'm going to introduce some 
uh, some of the zig which is actually just called green and it's actually got a slightly bluey tint to it now you might think what on earth am I doing that for it's uh you know it's leaves why do you want a sort of bluey green in there but I suppose my view is when I colour I don't really believe that it has to be completely authentic I'm not looking at this image and thinking every part of it needs to be exactly as you would see it in a garden I mean it's a magnolia image I believe it's not called magnolia or anything but I think it's a magnolia so you would therefore think it's going to be mostly pink um, with the green leaves but to give a bit of variety to the leaf I'm going to have the three different greens and I'm also going to have for the for the actual floral part of the image I've got two pinks here one is light pink and the other one is pink flamingo uh, really really soft uh, pink the light pink and obviously pink flamingo is a little bit stronger than that but I'm also going to put in a tiny bit of bright yellow and some yellow as well which of course is just not traditional with a magnolia but I still think it makes for a really pretty image so that's what I'm going to go with so I'm going to start by colouring one of the leaves for you so I'm going to just lay down my colour and you could lay down your water first I never do that really I put my colour down first and then I blend that out so I'm going to take the light green and I'm just going to add some along to the edge there I'm going to add my olive green in and I'm going to just put some at the end there none of this is very prescriptive and I'm going to take the green which is the one that has the slightly bluish tint to it and I'm just going to add a tiny bit in there and I've got a blend I've got a water brush here this is a fine tip Derwent water brush it's the one that I always use for my zigs and I'm just going to blend that out so you can see you get a really good blend right from the start when you put the water down like that and I'm overlapping those colours I'm not worried about how they mix I don't want them to look perfect I dab that off a little bit onto the paper towel and already I can see that that's that's quite strong that bluey green so it doesn't matter I'm going to fill that in for now and then I'm going to come back to that at a, once that layer's dried and I'm going to go over that again and just take out some of the blue. So again with the light green colour I'm going to put some light green there, some olive green here And for this bit, I'm just going to add a tiny bit of blue there and we'll see how that blends out and how it looks. It really is just a case of playing around and seeing what you like, what, what sort of colours you like together. As I say, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't even have to be authentic. This is supposed to be something that we do for enjoyment. And some people might find that they want it to be authentic and that's fine. But if you just want to colour an image and you want to enjoy the process and you want to end up hopefully with something pretty, then just go ahead and practice with what you've got. So I've changed the orientation around of my clipboard here because I'm going to colour this area here and obviously it's easier to do that if this side is drying over here. So my plan is to not use a heat tool. Um, I'm going to try and let this dry in real time so that you can see um, exactly how long it takes. So for the floral image I really want to keep it mostly pink. So my, I'm going to concentrate on laying down the pink first. So I'm just going to pick a couple of petals and I'm just going to put some of that pink down. I'm not really thinking about where it's going or anything at this stage. I'm just trying to make sure that I have a, a few different options on each petal. So again, just blending that out. I want them to run into each other. 
it doesn't matter also if you go over the edges here I'm just going to start the that was a little bit dry my pen there so I've just got that moving by squeezing some out onto the paper towel so you can see it it travel a little goes quite a long way with zigs and at the moment it looks a tiny bit mottled on this area here but in the next layer you're going to lose some of that so so that's my first two leaves and I'm just going to do one more over here but for this one I'm going to add in the two pinks side by side and then I'm going to add in a tiny bit of yellow but for this I know it's quite bright so I've scribbled a tiny bit on the block there and I'm just going to pick that up with the brush so and even squeeze a bit out on the side I haven't picked up enough or I squeeze too much out so I'm actually just going to go over that area there and it because I'm blending it with the pink it's sort of turning quite a soft orange it's really or a sort of creamy creamy color it really is quite pretty and actually that wouldn't be totally out of kilter with a magnolia so that's the first three petals they already look slightly different the composition's different um, although they've got similar colors the I haven't put the color in the same place on each one so I'm just going to do one more and then we'll go back to the leaves because I think they will be ready for another layer. So I'm going to take my pink there, I'm going to take my yellow and put a little bit there and I've done it without picking it up from the block this time just to see how that looks. And then I'm going to add in some pink flamingo there. So again, just taking the water brush and blending that out. And you can see it's a much, much brighter yellow. But I do blend it in with the pink flamingo colour and therefore that just mutes it down a little. And that's what I'm ending up with on my first layer. So going back to the petals, I'll turn the thing back round here. And I want to lose maybe just a little bit of that blue there. It just feels a little bit too bright in that area for me. So I'm going to take my green. This is the light green. And I'm just going to go over that area a little bit. And it brightens it up and it removes some of that blue. So I think that looks a bit better. It doesn't look quite so... Um, quite so bluey as it did and I'm going to do a similar thing on the petal here again just so that I I lose that block of blue that I had in the first layer but I do want to still see it I don't want it to disappear altogether and you can layer your zigs up I mean I could now put some of the uh, olive green down on there and that would again change the colour of it slightly again. But at the moment I think I'm happy with it like that. So I think I'll just put some of the olive green down there. I'm going to add in the green there. And I'm just going to do a tiny bit of the bluey green. Which is actually called green. It's number 40. And I'm just going to add that there and I'm going to blend that out. So again, you can see how far they travel. They, you know, particularly some tra some colours actually seem a little bit more pigmented than the the rest. And if I think it's travelling too far, the colour, I just dab off my water brush and I bring it back to the paper, and that sort of stems the flow of water and where it's travelling to. So that's those three leaves. Their first. First, well, these have had two layers here and this one's had one. So essentially, that's for this image, that's how I've chosen to go about my colours. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and speed up the colouring. I will add an, another layer onto these here and I will probably add in a little bit of the uh, bright yellow at this point. So 
I'm just going to add a tiny bit in there and then I'm going to blend that out with that. I mean it doesn't take long for this to dry because you're really not putting that much water down so you it doesn't take long you know you just go to another area of the image and you can go back and add it back in then and I'm also not worrying about any bleeding because I'm going to actually put some colouring around the image as well so I'm going to finish the rest of the colouring and I will then come back and just show you how I add the colour to the outside. So I'm back now and I'm going to start working on the colour around the image and I'm not going to change any of the colours that I'm using. It already has uh, seven different colours in this image and so I'm just going to sort of add some pinks and oranges around the floral area and some greeny browns around this area here. And I'm going to go about it in the same way. Uh, I'm really just going to add a tiny bit of colour down and then I'm just going to blend that out so it kind of disappears into the background. So I've taken the olive green here and I'm going to add a tiny little bit. I say tiny, it's a little bit bigger than tiny, but I'm not adding loads in there. You can see there and then I'm just going to take the brush and I'm going to blend that out and the water's flowing pretty well from my brush from here but I want it sort of a darker green in some areas but I do want it to sort of blend out to nothing and so obviously that that's going to depend how much you lay down and how much water you add. You can actually add your water first like if I add some water in here and then I add in some of the light green colour. You see it doesn't really make any, I mean it doesn't make a huge amount of difference. It does sort of spread out a little bit but it doesn't sort of travel in, a, in the way that watercolour does. I haven't put enough water down for it, for it to do that. So I think overall you can just control the spread a little bit more if you put if you put the pigment down first and then you add in your water on top. So I'm just going to continue to go round and add in a little bit of green there, another bit of green maybe here and some of that bluey green which is called green. It doesn't, it's not called blue green, it just comes out like that. So I'm just going to add a tiny bit in there. I mean you can do this all individually and add water after each bit but to save time you can just do that, 
blend it out until it hits the next area and then you can actually start blending those together. So I call this sort of messy water colouring. I've no idea really what it is. It's just adding colour to the outside of the image in a loose fashion. And I don't know whether whether you saw, but I did have a video up on Jennifer Maguire's channel. Very, <laughs> very kindly she asked me if I wanted to do a video on her channel. So I did, and I did a similar technique on that video so I'll link to that below in case you didn't see it but it's a, again I do I use a floral image and I add colour to the outside so that's how it's currently looking I mean I think it's probably a little bit more vibrant in real life than than you can see on camera here but I'm just going to add some of that mid green or oh, sorry light green colour there and then I'm just going to really blend that out now and that's really how I add the colour to the edges. It's There's nothing fancy about it at all. It's really easy to do. I mean, I've added the, the light green in again there and I've actually blended that out. That's covering quite a large area in between those sections. And I can now go in and if I want, I can just add in a tiny bit of the green on top of that. You can see... It's bleeding out a bit there, but you can still blend that together. So I've not worried, this is also quite a good way of hiding it if you have actually come outside of your image, which I have. And you probably can't see it, but I have come outside of the image there. So I'm now just gonna take the olive green and I'm gonna add in some color there. So it's really just gonna disguise my mistake as well. And it's all about just seeing, sort of spreading the colours around, seeing whether you like what you've got where, trying to, I suppose, get a little bit of a balance and not putting too much of one colour in one place. So that's me adding colour to the outside of that area there. And I just do a similar thing with the floral section as well. So I won't leave this going in real time. I will speed it up for you. It is essentially the same as I've just done the leaves. Again, I just want to make sure I don't overdo any one colour in one area. I also don't want it to look too protracted either. So it is just a case of playing around.
So I'm just going to start pulling the card together now and I'm removing the tape from the panel and I thought what I would do is add some splatters on at this point. So I'm taking the zig, which is actually the black one, just putting some down on acrylic block and then I squeeze out some of the water from my water brush into a little pot and then I use a number two round brush to add my splatters. I think it's number two, it could be number four, but I think it's number two. So I'm just going to add a few of those on just to give it a little bit more interest and it just sort of breaks up some of those areas. And then I take my heat gun to it just to make sure that it's really dry. I mean, most of it are dried anyway, but it's just to double check really, because I'm now going to run it through the die cutting machine. I took one of my Hero Arts Infinity rectangles and I just take that down with some low tack tape and I ran that through the big shot. So I've added some foam tape onto the back of the panel. I'm now going to pop that up onto an A2 top folding base card. This card stock is from Simon Says Stamp. It's called Smoke. It's a really pretty mid grey. And then I take my sentiment from Clearly Besotted Tiny Type and I'm going to stamp that using Versafine onto the same card stock. And I die cut that sentiment out with some Simon Says Stamp sentiment label dies because they cut really, really nicely and evenly. I've put some foam tape on the back, popped it up, and I'm now just going to add some sequins just to finish embellishing the card. So that finishes my card for today. I hope that you found that useful seeing it in real time and also a bit sped up. I will list all the products that I've used in the description below and I do have a coordinating blog post which is also linked below. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching. I'd love it if you'd hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and of course hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more and I'll be back soon with another project.